Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is a visually stunning movie from the master of the horror, comedy and superhero genres, with a talented cast of actors delivering great performances and some genuinely awesome set pieces. It's without a doubt one of the most unique and inventive movies in the entire MCU. The only problem is that the script's a fucking convoluted, inconsistent, fragmented mess that's handcuffed to the increasingly disjointed MCU overarching story, discredits characters that used to be smart and likeable, and doesn't seem to to know how to resolve the big ideas that it tries to grapple with. In short, watching this movie is a bit like watching a top flight racing team trying to win a Grand Prix with a Ford Escort. Everyone's trying their hardest to make it work, but all the talent and creative flair in the world just can't compensate for a shitty story. Allow me to enlighten you. The movie kicks off with a Doctor Strange from another universe trying to protect a girl who's the key to everything from a big magical demon thing while racing to recover a magical book that's the key to everything. Unfortunately the demon gets the better of him, but the girl who's the key to everything opens a portal at the last second that sucks them through into our dimension. That's when she runs into our Doctor Strange, who helps to fight off a big squid monster thing that follows her through and saves her life. Then they go out for breakfast together. Why? Don't know. Anyway, after fucking around and wasting time by being pointlessly vague and evasive, she finally explains that her name is America Chavez. Look, she even wears the stars and stripes on her denim jacket. <laughs> anyway, so Puerto Rico Chavez is being hunted by persons unknown because of her ability to travel from one universe to another. Anyone who's able to gain control of her power could theoretically dominate all of time and space across the entire multiverse. Needless to say, they have to prevent that from happening. So they take her to Kamataj for safekeeping, while Strange meets up with Wanda Maximoff to ask for her help. Oh, and as a little side note, Strange is totally cool with the fact that she basically enslaved an entire town and psychologically tortured the inhabitants for weeks because apparently she made everything right in the end. <coughs> Fuck off, film. She only gave up because she was fucking forced to. Also, these people are absolutely going to be in therapy for the rest of their lives. Anyway, wouldn't you know it, Wanda has fully turned into Scarlet Witch now and she's the person that's been trying to capture Nicaragua Chavez because she wants to travel into a different universe where the kids that she magicked into existence in WandaVision actually exist for real. Because she's still sad about Vision dying and just really wants to be a mum, I guess. You know, I have a few questions about this situation. If Wanda's still grieving for the death of Vision, which she certainly claims to be, then shouldn't her real priority be finding another reality where he's still alive? Why is she suddenly so obsessed with reuniting with the children that never even existed, and totally doesn't give a shit about the man who actually did exist? Also, if there's other realities where they do exist, then who the fuck is their dad? It's not Vision, that's for sure, because he's a fucking robot. So who else could it be? Also, the kids that she's obsessed with having for her own look to be about 10 years old now, which means she would have had to miss out on 10 entire years of their lives. And if she just wants to have kids and doesn't give a shit about Vision, then all she really needs to do is put herself on Tinder or something. Damn man, she'd have guys queuing around the block within a matter of hours. Also, how exactly was Scarlet Witch able to target and hunt down Costa Rica Chavez across the multiverse at the start of the movie, when she hasn't yet developed the ability to project herself between universes yet? Why did she send this stupid squid monster thing to capture her in New York when it would have made a lot more sense for her to go by herself. Why wasn't her opening gambit to approach Guatemala Chavez and just politely ask her to send her into a different universe? I mean, based on what little I know about her, she seems like a reasonable enough person. There's a pretty good chance she'd be willing to help Wanda out of sheer compassion. But nah, squid monsters are apparently the first step in establishing a good working relationship. The movie also makes the point that she'd have to kill the existing Wanda in the new universe so that she could take over her life and kids. I mean, ignoring the fact that you'd then have two Scarlet Witches of equal power facing off against each other probably resulting in massive collateral damage, it doesn't even need to fucking happen in the first place. There's probably millions of realities where that Wanda's dead and her kids have been left behind as orphans, so that seems like a much more logical solution to me. I reckon Strange would even be happy to help with something like that. Anyway, whatever. The point is that Wanda wants to get her hands on Venezuela Chavez, and Strange just went and told her where she's being held. An imbecile. Yeah. Like the dumbest motherfucker that ever lived. Oh Strange, you silly sausage. You know, I can't help but feel that the Doctor Strange from previous movies would never have been this gullible, but don't worry, we'll talk more about that later. 
Also, if he has the ability to open portals to anywhere on Earth, why can't he just drop Wanda into the middle of a fucking volcano, or the bottom of the Marianas Trench, or trap her in the Earth's core or something? This is what happens when you introduce more and more powers and abilities into your fictional world without really thinking about the long-term implications. I mean, shit man, if the Avengers now have the ability to travel through time, then basically anything bad that ever happens now can be undone with the press of a button. Nah, never mind, I guess none of that stuff counts now. So Wanda goes to Kamatsu and kills everyone there with absolutely minimal effort, and then Honduras Chavez escapes with Strange into a different universe. It's here that they have to figure out a way to stop Wanda and get everything back on track, and for this they're gonna need the Book of Vishanti, which is basically the book that's the key to everything. And conveniently enough there's only one fucking copy of it in the whole of existence that's been left outside of time and space. Not like the fucking Darkhold which exists in every fucking universe and is infinitely more dangerous, but nah, okay fine. But as they soon discover, the alternate Avengers in this new universe, who are now called the Illuminati for some reason, aren't exactly willing to help them. For some reason they keep thinking that Doctor Strange is the biggest threat to their reality and totally ignore the fact that Wanda is literally here to kill everyone. That's okay though, because Wanda conveniently shows up and, well, kills everyone. Strange gets the book that's the key to everything, but then Wanda sets it on fire and takes Bolivia Chavez to Mount Doom so that she can suck her multiverse powers out of her. But then Strange goes to another universe and fights an evil Strange so that he can steal another magic book from him, and then uses it to take control of a dead zombie strange in our universe so he can fight Wanda. Are you still with me on this one? Then Peruvian Chavez discovers the magical ability to punch things really hard, but it all turns out to be for nothing because Wanda's too stunning and brave for any of them to beat, but eventually she realises that it's kind of a bad thing to go around indiscriminately murdering people, and decides to collapse Mount Doom on her own fucking head, and then everything goes back to normal. And that's it, that's the plot for the Wanda Maximoff Memorial Tour. What a bizarre and conflicted mess this film is. I mean, I guess it makes sense to start with the positives and go from there. From a visual standpoint, there's some absolutely stunning, reality-bending sequences that really showcase what thousands of computer animators working in tandem can accomplish. Sometimes it goes a bit over the score and throws so much shit at your eyes that you can barely even process what you're seeing, but generally speaking, this film is rarely short on interesting things to look at. Apart from Wanda's costume, perhaps, which is distinctly less interesting than it used to be. Performances are generally excellent. Most of the heavy lifting has to be done by Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen and neither one of them drops the ball. They're both experienced pros who know exactly what they're doing, and Olsen in particular has some standout moments despite the weak material she's got to work with. It's been almost 10 years since Sam Raimi directed a big budget movie, and the world has absolutely been poorer for it. Everyone was pumped to see what he could do with a modern day Marvel flick, and to be honest, I'm still kinda waiting to find out. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's awesome little moments of Raimi-ness that manage to break through the heavy blanket of MCU conformity that smothers the entire film, but really all they do is highlight how little of his personality and style was actually allowed in. He teases moments of gore, horror, and the goofy physical comedy that made his early movies so awesome, but it's never really allowed to come into its own, and it's such a shame. Combine this with the rumours of extensive reshoots, and it leaves me wondering how much of the original movie actually made it to the screen. Fuck me, the mind boggles at what an R-rated Raimi version of Doctor Strange could have been. I've bitched plenty of times about the homogenised, formulaic nature of MCU movies today, and how bringing all of these guest directors in feels like kind of a waste of talent most of the time. I mean, Chloe Zhao proved with Nomadland that she was really good at taking static shots of pretty landscapes, but can you honestly say that any of that translated into The Eternals? Or like Sam Raimi, was she just another interesting name to slap into a standardised MCU property that was basically directed by the studio themselves? I mentioned before that this film really does its characters a disservice, and it all starts with Strange himself. Up until recently, he's been completely defined by his wisdom and intellect. A man who sees further than others, who perceives the world in terms of long-ranging cause and effect, and who's willing to make difficult choices for the greater good. No Way Home made him inexplicably reckless and short-sighted, and this film continues the unwelcome trend. Now he's weirdly gullible and trusting, giving away vital information to people that he shouldn't confide in, and letting his guard down around people that he absolutely shouldn't trust. Why? So the rest of the plot can happen, basically. There's a real through line in this movie that Strange's selfish pursuit of power and personal gratification has fucked things up in basically every other universe, and there's this weird attempt to mirror this against Wanda's own pursuit of personal happiness. You're an amazing creature, Spider-Man. 
You and I are not so different. The only problem is that they absolutely fucking are. They're driven by completely different objectives, and one's willing to kill anyone who gets in their way, while the other will do everything possible to save innocent lives. Fuck off, film. They're absolutely not the same. Stop trying to demonise the hero and drum up fake sympathy for the villain. Speaking of which, another big problem here is Wanda. I've always had a bit of an issue with her on a purely mechanical level, because I generally hate characters with vague, poorly defined magic powers. They tend to become a convenient crutch for lazy writers, because they can do whatever the story needs them to and nobody can really question it. I mean, it's magic, anything can happen. But even magic should still conform to some kind of rules and limitations. Now Wanda can evade absolutely any trap, overcome any defence, and defeat any opponent with the powers of her mind. And even that makes no fucking sense, like the movie can't even hold to its own internal consistency. Like at one point she's pitched against another universe's version of the Avengers, and she's able to kill one of them by basically tearing his body apart and vaporising him with a single look. But then another one she engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat like this is fucking American gladiators or something. If you can kill people with a single look, then why would you ever bother doing anything else. Another thing that really pisses me off about Wanda is the absolutely ridiculous arguments she tries to make to justify her actions that absolutely no one ever seems to call her out on. Like at one point Strange challenges her on the morality of murdering an innocent child just so she can live out a fantasy version of her own life in a different reality. I mean, I guess we'll forget about the hundreds of other people she's murdered by this point, because I guess they don't count as people. But anyway, her response to this is, and I kid you not, yeah, so? You gave the power stone to Thanos, so you're totally no better than me. <laughs> Are you serious? What the fuck kind of retarded argument is that? He gave the power stone to Thanos because it was literally the only option out of millions of possible realities that would allow them to defeat him and save the entire universe. Not to mention sacrificing his own life in the process. How is that in any way comparable to what you're doing here? Who the fuck wrote this garbage? And it's not the first time that she's pulled this kind of shit either. It's like in WandaVision where she faces off against evil white capitalist patriarchy representative and he politely asks her to release the town full of innocent people that she's taken hostage. And then she says this. You've taken an entire town hostage. Well, I'm not the one with the guns, director. He's pointing guns at you because you took an entire town full of innocent people hostage. Do you literally not understand cause and effect here? Seriously, why? Why does nobody ever call her out on this bullshit? Is it because they're all afraid of her? Or because the writers are too fucking stupid to come up with a logical rebuttal to the ridiculous situations they put her in? I'll let you decide. But probably the weakest aspect of the whole movie for me is the central MacGuffin, Columbia Chavez. Mostly because the film does absolutely nothing with her. After two fucking hours of screen time, I couldn't tell you a single thing about this girl beyond what she can do. I don't know what kind of personality she has, I don't know what she wants or what she fears, I don't know what she likes or dislikes because the movie gives me absolutely nothing. All she really does is run around looking mildly scared, and she fucking struggles to even do that because let's be real here, the actress is about as enthusiastic as me at an AA meeting. Jesus Christ, girl, this is the biggest gig of your entire career. You could at least look like you want to be there. There's also really weird moments, like when Mexico Chavez complains about our world being greedy and capitalistic because people have to pay for things like food instead of just taking whatever they want for free, like they do in most other realities. I mean, how does that even work? How do restaurants operate? Do the chefs slave away in a hot kitchen all day because they just love cooking food? If this film is trying to push the message then it's doing it in such a nonsensical way that I don't even understand the point it's trying to make all of this stuff adds up to a movie that I could best describe as the quintessential MCU flick at this point. Lots of bright colours and exciting visuals, some good acting and directing, and a plot that only makes sense as long as you don't think about it too much. I mean shit, there's definitely worse things out there, and if I had to compare it to the rest of Phase 4, it's definitely better than brain dead garbage like Black Widow, Shang-Chi or The Eternals. But man, Multiverse of Madness is a frustrating movie. It's frustrating because there's so much talent and potential behind it, and if only the writing had been a bit more focused and consistent, it could have been absolutely spectacular. As it stands, it's really just a big budget, over the top sequel to WandaVision that does very little to advance an MCU that seems to be drifting aimlessly with no real goal in mind. And if they don't know where the fuck they're going, then why should I care? Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.